What does the sixth entry in Hammer's Dracula series bring to the table? Well, it was the studio's first movie to get an R rating in the US, which is not something that can be said about many films in the grand scheme of things. After the certain unwelcome elements were taken a little too far in Taste the Blood of Dracula, this movie tries to get back to the roots of the character and adhere more closely to Stoker's novel. Scars of Dracula picks up after the previous film, with Dracula's remains lying in the church. With absolutely no build-up, which is disappointing, the Count is immediately resurrected when a bat flies in and drips blood on the remains. Really? That's what they came up with? Granted, the way in which he went out was also underwhelming, but you would think it would be a bit more difficult to resurrect the Prince of Darkness. Anyway, Dracula returns to his castle and begins terrorizing the local villagers once more. A cocky young man named Paul, again, different from the previous Pauls, is fleeing from the authorities due to a misunderstanding when he happens upon Castle Dracula. Welcomed by the Count and his servant Clove, yeah, remember him? Paul soon runs into trouble. This leaves his brother Simon to search for him and eventually discover the horrible methods of the vampire. As you can see, the story is very standard. It returns to the formula of the earlier films, that of the victims being lured into Dracula's castle. However, the finished product is actually a better film than Taste the Blood of Dracula, mostly because it feels more like a story about Dracula. Instead of trying to write him into a story about a group of other people, this one weaves the plot around him and his castle. As such, Christopher Lee basically does a variation on his performance from Horror of Dracula, given more dialogue and putting more of a subtly creepy vibe to the Count. The other characters are nothing special, but they are more appealing than those of the last film. Dennis Waterman and Christopher Matthews each do reasonably well in their respective roles. The same goes for Jenny Hanley as Simon's fiancée Sarah and Michael Gwynn as the priest. Not really adding anything that we haven't seen before, but playing their parts well enough. Who does bring something new is Patrick Troughton as Clove, whose passionate anguish generates sympathy for the miserable wretch. He partially serves as this film's version of Renfield. Speaking of which, there is noticeably more inspiration taken from the book than other entries in the series. For instance, Dracula is shown climbing the walls of his castle and having control over animals like bats. In addition, the gothic aesthetic is more prominent here. Many of the decorations and weapons in Castle Dracula look more stylized, with the colors of black and red being particularly strong. The violence also works to the film's advantage, with some of the imagery being more gruesome than the other films, strengthening the morbidity and menace that is prevalent throughout. Director Roy Ward Baker, while not bad by any stretch of the imagination, definitely plays it safe and does not take as many risks. The same can be said for the overall film. Scars of Dracula goes back to the well-tread formula that we all know, but the solid acting, increased emphasis on the source material, and ornately gothic style still make it a fairly entertaining watch that feels more like a Dracula movie.